ADR is um, automated dialogue recording, and it's the recording of on-screen lines that you either didn't get because there was, you know, too much background noise or an issue with the equipment, um, or maybe you got it but the quality is just subpar for some reason, and so you'll bring the actor into the studio into a, kind of a voiceover booth, and you'll play back the picture and you'll loop it for them so they can watch it a few times and, and watch themselves say the, the dialogue. And then they re-record it to mouth, you know, to match exactly what their mouths are saying the first time when you guys were on set. So, so we, have, uh, we have a little um, Foley slash ADR recording room and it's probably about 10 by 15 and there's a window so the actor is in the ADR booth. There's a flat screen television next to the window which is playing back the film that they're doing ADR for. Through the window is another room where the recording engineer is sitting at a console with Pro Tools. And they are both looking at the tracks from the original production that we're trying to re-record. And then they're also recording the new dialogue that the actor is saying. So, it's kind of a, it's a team effort. And then director's typically there to help with performance and make sure that they're doing, um, they're doing things in the vein similar to what they would have on set. We just did some ADR for a feature um, where the entire scene had no dialogue. The mixer, we weren't doing set recording. Um, it was in the Bahamas and the mixer actually broke on set and so there was no sound at all. And uh, it was this really intense emotional scene. There was violence, there was, you know, like strangulation, they were on a boat. So yeah, to get back in that headspace from an actor's perspective can be really challenging sometimes, which is why it's great to have the director there. Foley is the recording of effects basically. Um, if you can't find sound effects in a library that you like or that match what you're trying to do on screen, you record them. It's mostly footsteps. It's like probably 70 to 80 percent footsteps that they get done in Foley, but it can be anything from, you know, putting a glass down on a table to an exhale, um, breathing, panting, screaming. All of those things can just be uh, recorded on the stage and, and that's done by also doing playback of the film like ADR. So you're, you're watching picture as your Foley artist is recreating the footsteps or the glass set down or the smoke exhale that the characters are doing on screen. And, and you do that because the production sound um, either doesn't feel right or wasn't um, loud enough on set to be recorded properly and, and you just kind of want to amp it, amp it up a bit. Dialogue editing, which is um, really important. I mean, they're all important, but that's the first step of any kind of audio post workflow. And it's the editing and smoothing of all your production track. So, you know, how do we take a sound recording that had the microphone pointed in one direction in one room and maybe there was a window open and there was a freeway and you hear all this kind of background white noise and then you get the reverse shot because maybe it's like an over the shoulder conversation but that wall behind the other actor you know is full of curtains or something and it sounds really clean but the scene's going to be cut together and depending on how they were mic'd and how it was recorded, you're gonna get a different perspective and you're, you're gonna hear that background shift, you're gonna hear the dialogue change because of the way that the sound was reflecting off the surfaces in the room and just all of those little things and then you know, taking out clicks, taking out pops. If, um, if the actor's mouths are dry, typically there's a lot of like um, saliva clicking that we just go in with a little like pencil and kind of erase out. So just making it sound as clean and, and consistent as you possibly can. And then that foundation of 
good dialogue asks, serves as the, you know, the thing that we build everything else upon for the, the sound effects and the Foley and the ADR and the music. Sound effects are so much fun. It's, I mean, it's all fun, but that's the really playful, creative, um, yeah, just inventive part of the sound process. And it's a taste thing too, you know, you have to make sure that the sound designer's taste aligns with the director's because every little piece of your movie is saying something that should add up to a whole. And if, if the way that that door slams doesn't line up with the mood of the scene, you're gonna shift the experience in a different direction for the viewer. So it's, it's a tricky and magical thing. But we have, uh, we have a really extensive sound library that we pull from. We've purchased sounds. We also still do field recordings. Jinji loves going out at least once a week and getting her own recordings in the most random places. Um, she, was on, she was on some train tracks a couple of weeks ago and basically almost died because she was trying to get this amazing sound of the, of the train wishing by. So I think I'm going to have to send a chaperone with her from now on, but, uh, but we got it. Background editing is the addition of background sounds into, um, into the scenes, which means, you know, it's not, uh, it's not just a short clip that you're adding in like an effect to amplify a movement or indicate something happening on screen. It's a longer, kind of more subtle, quiet bed of sound that relates to the environment overall that you're in, in the film. So if we're at a playground, maybe one of the backgrounds we'll add in are, you know, children swinging or something that has light traffic, but there's also birds and maybe there's um, an ice cream truck in the background. Or if you're, um, I mean, these are extreme examples, but if you're in a jungle, you know, backgrounds that include wind and trees and different types of those animals that you would hear in that surrounding. So we, you try to layer two to four backgrounds minimum so that you have options for the director and in the mixing stage to kind of choose which ones you like to bring up and which ones you like to bring down. And that's sound design as well. You know, it, it contributes to the creative experience of the movie, but typically the production tracks are just you know, just room tone. And so it can be very dead and very flat if you don't, if you don't really spend the time to, to pick good backgrounds. Typically clients will come to us with a composer or with music they've already chosen. Um, we have an in-house composer who's wonderful and we also have a database of composers that we like working with whose, uh, whose samples we feel are really strong. But we don't typically serve as a music studio. We will edit the music and we'll sweeten it and we'll mix it, but usually the, uh, the music stems come to us pre-made and, and cued, so. And then, and then there's final mixing, which is the, uh, the last stage where all of those different elements come together. You're EQing, you're setting levels, you're polishing and making sure that everything is interacting in the right way.